man, the woman, the serpent, the tree, the fruit, the lie, the sin, the fall. Welcome back for Telling God's Story. Today we'll take a look at Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 24. So as we read through Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 24, immediately we see Satan doing the thing that he does most, calling God's word into question. What is the question that he asks Eve? Did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Now Eve is asked this question and and she responds, well, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that's in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it lest you die. And he's got her for a few reasons. He's got her first off because she's allowing the question, buying into the serpent's lie, calling into question the word of God. But more than that, he's got her because she's got it wrong. That's not what God had told her. Yes, God in Genesis chapter two had told Adam, you may surely eat of any tree of the garden, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day you eat of it you shall surely die. God said nothing about touching it. Eve's already distorting this word that God had given to these first people. And it's from that point on that the serpent, he's got them. He continues with the lie. You will not surely die. He knows that when you eat of it your eyes will be open. You'll become like him, knowing good and evil. Adam and Eve, they did not know evil. They knew simply good. They knew what it was to be people who lived in accordance with God's will. And now that's all about to change. So when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and it was a delight to the eyes and the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and she ate. And she also gave to some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Calls into question what Adam is up to because he's there with her. God has created Adam and Eve to live in this particular relationship with one another of head and helper. Part of Adam's responsibility is to protect and to preserve and to prevent things like this from happening. But instead, Adam sits and he watches and then he participates. He falls for the serpent's lies just as much as Eve does. Throughout the New Testament, this incident, it's almost always commented on as being Adam's sin because Adam has failed in his responsibility as head to protect those who are placed under him. So Adam and Eve, they take the fruit and they eat and everything is broken. Uh, Immediately we see that their eyes are open. They know they're naked. They go, they hide because they're ashamed. Uh, God calls out to them, where are you? Uh, And they said, we hid from you. His response, who told you that you were naked? And what happened? His fingers are pointed. Adam points his fingers at Eve, this woman that you gave me, She gave me this fruit and I ate it. Eve points her fingers at the serpent. The serpent deceived me and I ate. This is life under the fall. We're affected by sin, by guilt, by shame, by lies, by sin. Everything is broken. And that's what God gets at when he lists to Adam and to Eve the different effects of their sins. None of this is new. It's not new that Eve is going to bear children. It's not new that she's going to exist in this relationship with her husband of head and helper. But what's new is now it's broken. Now it doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Now it's something she's not going to like. Childbearing will be painful. Being in a head and helper relationship is something that she's going to resent. She's going to want that position that her husband has, but she won't have it. More than that, he's not always going to be a particularly good head. He's broken too. They're going to eat the fruit of the earth just like they always would, but now they have to work for it. Now the ground will resist them. Thorns and thistles will make a huge pain out of trying to produce the fruits of the earth, the things they need to survive. Adam, you'll eat bread, fine, but it's by the sweat of your brow. You'll have to work for it. And more than that, and here's where it gets real. You will return to the ground, for from it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Romans 5 gets at this idea that death enters into creation through sin. And here we see God laying it out for them. Because sin has become part of your experience, because you have turned away from me, because now you've severed this relationship that you have with your God, because now you're no longer perfect and righteous and just, death has entered into creation. The ultimate brokenness that we experience within this creation. But God doesn't leave them just with doom and gloom. It's important that we note the fall. 
it's important that we note where everything went askew. And we'll continue to see that as we search through the scriptures, as we see it when we look at our own lives. But God delivers to them a promise, declared towards the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Now God's people throughout the ages have taken that as a promise of a coming Messiah. The first one to take it as a promise of a coming Messiah is Eve, who in Genesis chapter 4, when she gives birth to Cain, declares, I've gotten a man with the help of the Lord, hoping that this man that she's gotten is the fulfillment of God's promise. Of course, we know that that's not the case, that Cain is more personification of the fall with his murder of his brother than he is a fulfillment of God's promise of a Messiah. But that promise will be fulfilled in Christ Jesus, who overcomes the serpent, who undoes the effects of the fall, who brings to God's people redemption, forgiveness, life, and salvation, and in whom we hold the promise of ultimately recreation on the last day. That's about it for Genesis chapter 3. Come back again next time as we continue telling God's story by looking at the flood.